Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of our fasting this holy month of Ramadan and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with ikhlas, with the bad ala sunnah to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And help us to do positive and go forward in our lives. Doing those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with. And avoiding those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is displeased with. And that brings up the importance as we've discussed on numerous numerous occasions the importance of sincerity to Allah in all that we do and we can never hear enough about ikhlas or we can never get enough reminders about ikhlas lillah subhanahu wa ta'ala of sincerely worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and making our ibadah our worship solely for his sake that is something we all need to be reminded by because as we see from the Salaf of this Ummah, Imams like Imam Malik, it was said that he would sometimes be very silent during the Dars and he would have perhaps a thousand or thousands of students staring at him while he's in the Haram of the Prophet Sallallahu about to Teach, teach ilm al nafia a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and it said that sometimes those ones in the front row would notice that Imam Malik was very silent, or sometimes right in the middle of his statements, he would stop and just be moving his shafatain. I mean, his his uh, his 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 lips. And he was asked about that. And he said he was trying to revitalize his niyyah. Revive his niyyah. His intention. Letting us know those great imams. And those who came after them. And those who came before them. All had to battle the intention. And that's one of the most difficult things to do. Is purify our intention for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala making what we do acts of ibadah for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala especially those people doing da'wah who are out there calling people to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's a very difficult thing to keep the niyyah, the intention pure and then those people also striving and fighting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also that is a very difficult thing to keep your intention pure, especially in this day and age where everywhere we go we have to have a cell phone or a video camera. How many videos have we seen of people out in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So doing those things, seeking knowledge and teaching it, striving in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Spending in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, spending your wealth. All of those are some of the greatest deeds that you can do. They're mentioned all throughout the Quran and all throughout the authentic sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa However, those same deeds, if your intention is not correct, can destroy you, can condemn you to the hellfire. وَعِيَاذٍ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ And that is something that is should be should make our uh, the hair on our skin raise. If we really reflected, if we really feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we would be fearful, perhaps weeping, in the realization of how, how uh, serious the intention is. How imperative it is to renew your intention that it's for Allah. I'm doing this for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want this to go forward for the sake of Allah, not for the sake, I'm not doing da'wah for myself, for my group, for my sect. 
I'm not doing dawah for my color, for my people, for whatever it is. But no, it's for Allah. It's to please Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what is the difficult thing. Or you're not calling to yourself for the person making da'wah and, and, and seeking knowledge and transmitting that knowledge. They have to purify their intention that it's not to call to themselves, to call to hisbiyah, to call to uh, th that their selves are pure and righteous and others are not. That's, that takes ikhlas lillah, sincerity. And likewise, the one striving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that they're not doing it to be just famous amongst the people, that they're doing it for this, to raise up the, the word of Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala. And likewise, the one who spins in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they have to purify their intention. This is for Allah. I'm giving this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't want the praise of the people. I don't want the thank, thanks of the people. I don't want to be heard or seen and famous due to my spending the wealth in righteousness. Listen to this hadith of the Prophet wasallam, which deals with this matter. This is the hadith, I believe of Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu. who said that he heard from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he heard the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say in al awwal nas yuqda alayhi yawm al qiyamah Rajilun Ustushid. Rajilun Ustushid. For Utiabi, for Arafuhu, Niamuhu, for Arafaha. For Kal, Ma'amul Tafiha. Kala Katal Tufika. Hatta ustushid. Hatta ustushidtu. Kala kithabt. Lakinna ka fa'alt. Liyukal. Huwa. Jawad. Jariyun. Faqad qil. Thumma umira bihi. فَصُحِبَ عَلَى وَجْهِهِ حَتَّ أُلْكِيَ فِي النَّارِ The first person was the one who fought in the, in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to raise up the word of Islam, the kalimat Allah, Tawheed. And they will be brought before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment and they and it will be asked of them what did you do and he will say I fought for your sake and I was martyred and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say Kitab, you lied but rather you did it so that the people would say that he was brave and it was said so then this man will be dragged on his face in the hellfire وَرَجِلٌ تَعَلَّمَ الْعِلْمِ وَعَلَّمَهُ وَقَرَى فِيكَ الْقُرْآنِ وقرأت فيك القرآن قال كذبت ولكنك فعلت لي قال هو قارئ ولأن هو يقال هو عالم فقد قيل ثم أمر به فصحب على وجهه 
حتى ألقي في النار. The second person on the day of judgment is the one who will come be brought before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and will be asked similar to the, the first one and what did you do for my sake? He will say I I read the Quran you know I memorized the Quran it's half of the Quran and I taught it or I was a beautiful reciter and I sought knowledge talib al ilm and I taught it to the people that I did that for your sake Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say kithab you lied but rather you did it so that the people would say alimun qarihun that you were a great reciter and that you were an alim you were a very knowledgeable scholar or sheikh and it was said about you then he will be dragged upon his face into the hellfire wa'iyadu billah min dalak wa rajulun wasa Allah alayhi wa atahu min asnaf al-mal kullihi فَأُتِيَ بِي فَعَرَّفُهُ نِعَامُهُ فَعَرَّفَهَا قَالَ فَمَا عَمَلْتَ فِيهَا قَالَ مَا تَرَقْتُ مِنْ سَبِيلَ أَنْ تُحِبُّ وَنْ يَنْفَقَ فِيهَا إِلَّا أَنْفَقْتُ فِيهَا لَكْ قَالَ كِذَّابْتْ وَلَكِنَّكَ فَعَلْتَ لِيُقَالْ هُوَ جَوَادٌ فَقَدْ قِيلْ ثُمَّ أُمِرَ بِهِ فَصُحِبَ عَلَى وَجْهِهِ ثُمَّ أُلْكِيَ فِي النَّارِ The third one is the man who will be brought before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he spent from his wealth. And he's asked وَأَطَاهُ مِنْ أَسْنَافِ الْمَالِ كُلِّهِ And he gave from his wealth from all the various ways that he had wealth all of it. You know, all the ways he could provide wealth, from money, from maybe helping people with his wealthy, you know, whatever he had that's considered wealth, whether it be money and jewels and things that others can benefit from, charity, building buildings, owning buildings, maybe he gave people buildings to, 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 to for free, to use for good or whatever. That's all considered mal in Islam. So he had various ways of spending and giving mal. And he say, he said, you know, ma anfaktu, ma taraktu, min sabila anfak illa anfaktu fiha lak. Oh, kama kal. He said, I didn't leave a path in which to spend for your sake except that I spent in it meaning that every way that I could figure out to spend for your sake Ya Rabbil Alameen I did it Allah will say Kithabd, you lied but rather you did it so that the people would say you were a, spin, a philanthropist and it was said about you so you, so you got that. Then he will be dragged into the hellfire. Ru'al Muslim. In this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it shows us, again, the importance of our intention. The intention is for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. That when we do every act of ibadah, it must be for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and it has to be built upon sincerity to Allah and in accordance with the sunnah of the message of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam how he did it how he understood it how he articulated it and what he allowed alayhi salatu wasalam so all of our actions are restricted by those things and that without sincerity in what we do it could end us up being in the hellfire wa'iyadun billah min dhalika 
and it teaches us to always be on guard with regards to our intention. Strive in your utmost to remind yourself and to come back when you see, when you feel a little bit is off pace. Then you come back, you bring yourself back. Make your, renew your intention constantly. That's a reminder to myself and those listening. Re renew the intention. Say the du'as that help your, your, your ikhlas, you know, and, 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 and to forget forgiveness for committing shirk. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika and ushrika bika wa ana a'lamu wa astaghfiruka liman a'lamu. O Allah, verily I seek refuge in you from committing shirk, that which I do knowingly and that which I do unknowingly. So seek refuge in Allah from shirk because shirk will get you into the hellfire. Allah does not forgive shirk. If a person dies upon shirk, even some of the ulama, they say that even this includes the minor shirk. Meaning like this, we're talking about the riya showing off and doing it for fame. But that fame and showing off, even that, more properly understood, can show you that sometimes that showing off can be the major shirk. Sometimes it can be the minor shirk. Sometimes you're, you're just beautifying your ibadah. You're making a partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're you're, you're doing it for the people and you're doing it for Rabbil Alameen. And sometimes you're doing it strictly for the people. And that's shirk khalis. If you do an act of ibadah strictly for the people, then that's the major shirk. That can get you into the hellfire forever. Wa'iyadu billah min dhalika. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah la yaghfiru wa yushriku bi wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalika li man yasha. Verily, Allah does not forgive that you set up associate partners with Him. But He forgives other than that for whomsoever He pleases. Meaning that if you die upon shirk, Allah doesn't forgive it. It's the greatest sin. Because Allah forgives everything else. All the other things. Drunkenness. Using drugs. Committing adultery and fornication. Uh... Cheating, lying, stealing, killing someone. All of those things can be forgiven forgiven by Rabbil Alameen if he chooses. Inshallah, Yaghfirullah, Inshallah, Yu'adhabak. If Allah wills, He will forgive you, and if Allah wills, He will punish you. But if you're of Ahli Iman, you're the people of Tawheed, you worship Allah only alone as a Muslim, and you die in that state. If you die in a state of Islam with those major sins, then you're, you'll be held to the Mashiatillah. That if He wills, He will punish you. If He wills, He will forgive you. But you will come out of the hellfire. Believe that as Ahli Iman, they will only go into the hellfire for a period of time for their sins as a form of purification. But the one who dies on shirk and kufr, those things would take you outside of the fold of Islam. They have no hope and no one will be able to help them. And their families will flee from them. And they'll be in the hellfire forever. And so we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us with ikhlas with the bad, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Please bless us with the ikhlas, with the bad. On the sunnah of your messenger, alayhi salatu wa salam, and may Allah forgive us of all, all of our sins, and bless us this holy month of Ramadan to gain benefit. I'm fearful that some of us might not gain any benefit from Ramadan. We haven't left the sins. We continue doing this, and backbiting, and cursing, and watching this, and, and listening to that, and doing this, and doing that. May Allah forgive us and may Allah help us to, 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 to do good and make it easy upon us and forgive us for all of our sins and help us to go forward and be better slaves of His. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.